notice the same day as the second coming is also the same day of our being gathered up to him this day is clearly the rapture this big event will not occur until at least the middle of the tribulation when the antichrist or the man of lawlessness is revealed for who he truly is daniel 9:27 states he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven in the middle of the seven he will put an end to sacrifice and offerings and on a wing of the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him so daniel's prophecy predicts a seven-year peace treaty before the end of time in the middle of this period the man of lawlessness will be revealed for who he is at the abomination of desolation revelation 13:5 states the beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months so the antichrist rules 42 months or 1260 days until christ returns to do him in revelation 11 2b through 3 states they will trample on the holy city for 42 months and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days. The holy city referenced is Jerusalem, which will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the age of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Luke 24:23 also references this, and this age will culminate at the time of the rapture. The ram and goat vision discussed in Daniel's 8th chapter is a vision of the end of time. Verse 17b states, Understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. Daniel 8, 13 and 14 is a discussion of the vision's meaning. Quote, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? The vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation and the surrender of the sanctuary and the hosts that will be trampled underfoot. He said to me it will take 2300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. The daily sacrifice starts sometime near the beginning of the tribulation, sometime after the peace treaty is signed. The temple is reconsecrated at the second coming, which is literally 2300 days later. The last time I checked, a morning and evening was a literal day. So 2300 days is just over six and a half years. If one does a little math, day 220 of the tribulation period will be when temple sacrifice starts. In Jewish custom, early on in the temple construction phase will the animal sacrifices begin when the foundation is laid and after the altar is built. The seal and trumpet judgments as spelled out in the Bible's book of Revelation give the saints many other signs of the times as well. So the return of Christ will indeed not be secret nor unexpected to the wise discerning church saints. When the tribulation troubles unfold, we should know that God is knocking at the door and will soon appear at the culmination of this prophetic age. As Colossians 3, 4 states, And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So we will instantly be changed like the stars of the universe. All those unfortunate earth dwellers who miss the rapture will not only see Christ in all his glory, but will see us. It is interesting to know that even the stars declare the glory of God. They have set the stage for many important events of the prophetic past, and they also predict what is to come. Genesis 1.14 states, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs 
and for seasons and for days and years. Psalms 19, 1 through 4 states, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. God used miraculous signs in the heavens above to mark the birth of Christ. The star of Bethlehem speaks to this. The Jews missed those heavenly signs and the Apostle Paul rebukes them for this. In Romans 10, 17 and 18 it states, But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Not only did the words of the early church go out into all the earth, but the heavenly bodies proclaim this message as well. So Paul was cross-referencing Psalms to tell us that even the stars declare that the only hope for this world is Jesus. In Acts 2.20 after Pentecost, the Apostle Peter quoted from the prophecy of Joel 2.31, The sun turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Peter was referencing the signs in the heavenly bodies that had occurred at the crucifixion to reaffirm that something miraculous had just occurred when Jesus died for our sins. These signs referenced by Peter foreshadow what will occur at the second coming of Christ. All the stars did not fall from the sky at the crucifixion, but you can sure bet there were a lot of shooting stars that crucifixion night. One may argue that a solar eclipse occurred on the day of the crucifixion, but it's impossible for both a solar and a lunar eclipse to occur on the same day. And I've never seen or heard of a solar eclipse lasting for three hours. What occurred with the sun was a miraculous darkening used by God as a foreshadow of the future darkness that would cover the face of the earth in conjunction with the many earthquakes, fires, and the smoke that will occur with the second coming of Christ. In the ancient times, a red moon symbolized a lunar eclipse. If this occurred at the time of the crucifixion, certainly a lunar eclipse will occur at the time of Christ's return. So, when we see the end times prophecies unfolding, we can predict based on the future lunar eclipses when Christ will return. This is yet another point among many that proves that there is no such thing as an imminent return of Christ. The Bible's end times prophecies prove this fact with a hundred percent certainty, leaving absolutely no doubt. The tribulation period will be marked as a time of great distress, unequaled from the beginning of time. So knowing the signs of the end times will give the Christians hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel and the name of the light is found in Jesus. 